Red Sox starting pitching this year is going to be vital to this team's success, but there's one pitcher in particular on this 2023 team whose success is going to be extremely important in putting together this puzzle that is the 2023 Red Sox pitching staff. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Seat Radio. My name is Corbin, and right now the Red Sox offense looks like they're going to be pretty good, which means it's going to come down to the pitching staff. And as we learned last year, pitching is extremely important. It always is important, but last year was highlighted even more with this Red Sox team and throughout Major League Baseball. It highlighted just how important pitching was to winning championships. That's why this year the Red Sox pitching staff, specifically their rotation, has come under a lot of scrutiny, and rightful scrutiny too. Can they stay healthy when they are healthy can they be effective and overall can they perform well throughout an entire season enough to honestly carry this team into the playoffs and that's why in my opinion there is one player on this team who's going to be extremely vital in making all of that happen so what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to break down why i think this pitcher could be the key to red sox pitching success we're going to talk about some statistics we're going to talk about where he would fit in on this team and what role he would play that makes him so important to this team's success but before we get into that do me a favor make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already if you're new here we talk red sox content almost every single day also make sure you guys have hit the like button as well helps these videos out a ton and would mean a lot to me thank you all very much for clicking on this one let's get into it now if you've been following along on this channel for a little bit you probably already know who we're going to talk about today but because we have mentioned it in past videos but we've never done a full breakdown before and i want you guys to really get the full picture as to why i think tanner hauk is the most important pitcher on this red sox team and there are a couple of reasons for that in tanner hauk's couple years in the major leagues he's been really good he's technically spent three years at the major league level but one of those seasons in 2020 was just three appearances so we're only going to talk about 2021 and 2020 2022 because 2020 tends to inflate his statistics a little bit but over those two years 2021 and 2022 Tanner Houck has a combined ERA of just 335 a FIP of 291 meaning that he was actually a bit unlucky when it came to his final ERA and he had an ERA plus of 134 which makes him about 34 percent more productive than the average pitcher in Major League Baseball so for the first two seasons of Tanner Houck's young career Houck has been a well above productive pitcher at the Major League level now the reason I bring this up is because those statistics are great, but I think Tanner Howe can take those statistics to another level, and here's why. Tanner Howe just flat out has disgusting stuff. Last year, compared to every other pitcher who threw a sinker in the major leagues, Tanner Howe had the second most vertical movement out of all of those pitchers, right? Only Logan Webb of San Francisco Giants had more vertical movement overall than Tanner Houck in Major League Baseball. That's pretty impressive for a guy who's really only pitched at the Major League level for a full season in just 2022, right? 2021 was only 14 appearances, 2020 was only three. So in his first full season in Major League Baseball, he had the second best sinker in terms of movement in the entire league. He also has a really nasty slider. Again, comparing him to everyone else who regularly threw a slider at the Major League level last year, Tanner Houck was ranked 30th among every Everyone else that is out of 350 potential players he was ranked 30th his stuff is absolutely gross and he talks about it all the time how he's always tweaking things he's always trying to change grips he's always trying to increase movement he mentioned that in his interview with Jemai Webster the other day this is a guy who prides himself on his grips on his ability to generate movement with his pitches and there's a possibility that those numbers just keep increasing there is a very real possibility that at some point in the future Tanner Houck has either one of the nastiest sliders in all of baseball or the nastiest sinker in all of baseball. It's a very likely possibility. And there are a couple things holding him back over the last couple of years that prevented him from taking that next step forward. The first is being his control, right? And this tends to happen with guys who have really nasty movement on their pitches because for the most part, it's really hard to control them breaking into the zone. And Tanner Houck has fallen victim to that over the last couple of years. Last year in particular, he was in the 45th percentile in terms of walk rate if you look at the league average is at 50 he walked about five percent more batters than the average pitcher in baseball last year so control has been a bit of an issue with tanner Houck. he also hits a lot of players as well the other roadblock kind of holding him back from taking that next step forward was his ability to get through a third time through a lineup and the reason for that is mostly because he for the most part relies on two pitches that sinker a fastball and a slider right and the fastball he doesn't use a ton it's mostly sinker slider so 
know by the third time through the rotation, either guys have figured it out or they've learned to, hey, if I just lay off the slider for a couple of pitches, I'm either going to get walked or he's going to throw me a sinker that I can punish. And why am I telling you his roadblocks? Because in my opinion, he is getting close to getting over those roadblocks. He talked about it again in that interview with Jemai Webster, but he's talking about it over the last couple of starts. He's really working on mastering a third pitch, and that third pitch is going to be a splitter. He's starting to feel really comfortable with that splitter. We should start to see more splitters as he goes through the rest of spring training and into the regular season. If Tanner Howe can A, increase his control, it's again, something he's been working on with Dave Bush, as well as talking to veterans on this team, which I think is a really important thing that Tanner Houck said. He said that he is one, working with Dave Bush, but two, he is working with these guys who are, you know, Cy Young runner-ups, Cy Young winners, all-star game appearances, league leaders and strikeouts and stuff like that. And they all have nasty movement on their pitches. So how do they get balls into the zone at a consistent rate? And when do they know to, hey, drop one out of the zone and get a pitcher swinging or throw one above the zone, get a hitter to pop out and stuff like that. That is extremely vital to Tanner Houck really taking the next step. And it's awesome to see that initiative. And I think it's something that's going to really work out for Tanner Houck in 2023. And if it does work out and he adds the ability to control his pitches a little bit more, as well as introduce a brand new third pitch that is almost as devastating as his first two, he could be a really, really dangerous pitcher. Now, the other reason I think Tanner Houck is going to be important to this team is because of the role he is going to play in 2023. To start the year off with the injuries that we have on this team right now, there's a pretty big possibility that Tanner Houck starts the year in the rotation. Now, as guys get healthy and come back, James Paxton, Garrett Whitlock, Brian Bale, those guys start uh, regaining strength and taking back their positions in this rotation. In my opinion, Tanner Houck will move into a long relief role in the bullpen. And to me, that's where he is going to be the most important. And the reason for that is because more than likely in a long relief role, especially at the beginning of the year, he's going to be piggybacking guys like Sale, Paxton, Whitlock, Bayo, right? All these guys who are coming off of injuries. Now, why is this important? It's because Tanner Houck has the ability to save these guys, to help these guys regain their strength because they know that, hey, listen, I'm going to go four innings. I'm going to give it all I got. I'm going to stretch myself out. And then I know Tanner Houck's going to come in for the fifth, sixth, and seventh, and he's going to absolutely shut them down. And not only will this save the arms of our starting pitching, but the Red Sox really struggled in the middle innings of games last year. It felt like last year we were losing games in the ninth, 10th, 11th inning, but we actually lost a lot of games in that sixth fifth seventh inning area last year in the fifth and sixth inning the opponent batting average for the boston red sox was a combined total of 259 they had a team era in those same innings of 5.15 and they allowed 48 home runs in just those two innings alone over the entirety of last season if tanner Howe can come in save pitchers arms which is going to be extremely important with the state of this red sox rotation but also shut down those middle innings where the Red Sox struggled in last year, he is going to increase the Red Sox winning percentage. So the combination of him getting better every single season, the combination of where he's going to play in within this team, what role he's going to have, and hopefully the combination of an addition of another pitch could make Tanner Houck, in my opinion, the most important and vital piece of this Red Sox pitching staff throughout the entirety of 2023. Now going forward, I really hope that Tanner Houck ends up making his way into the rotation i think that he will right you've got paxton kluber both guys who are on one-year deals you've got pavetta who the red sox don't seem overly attached to there is probably going to be some room for tanner Houck in this rotation going forward and in my opinion 2024 and beyond we're really going to see what tanner Houck can do over the entirety of a regular season but just for 2023 alone i am super excited and i'm really really hopeful for what tanner Houck can do and i'm really confident in what Tanner Howe can do. I think the role that he is going to be in and play for this 2023 team is going to be one of the reasons this Red Sox rotation stays together. But I could be completely wrong and it's just my opinion. So let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think of this? Who do you think is going to be the most important person on this Red Sox pitching staff? Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? And what do you think of Tanner Houck? Do you think he has the ability to do all this? Do you think he's going to fall off? Do you think he's going to get better? What are your thoughts on Tanner Houck and the Boston Red Sox pitching situation 
down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton, and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you in the Red Seat.